and Charlotte was the site of the last full meeting of the Confederate cabinet in the Pfeiffer home, April 26, 1865. George Davis resigned. George Trenholm would resign soon after. He was sick. That's why they met in that house. Charlotte was also the repository for a short amount of time of the Confederate treasury. For all y'all that want to go hunt the Confederate gold. <laughs> <laughs> the papers from the War Department were sent to Charlotte and left there and then turned over to the Federals. Robert E. Lee's first headquarters flag Stars and bars with the stars in the shape of an A. They were in Charlotte at the end of the war. Charlotte, Robert E. Lee retired that flag after Gettysburg and carried the second national. So there, despite what the local history librarian thought, there was plenty of information. And my book came out in 2012. So somebody can't go to the library not that many people go to the library anymore. But people can't go to the library and say, oh, well, there's no book about Charlotte in the war. How does your county stack up? <laughs> if I were to walk into your local county library and ask for information or ask for a book about the war years in the county that you call home, what would the librarian bring out? I spend a good deal of time in Carter County, Tennessee do a lot of living history interpretive work at a couple of state historic sites over there. A few decades ago, the county historian, y'all in Tennessee have county historians. I think that's awesome. We don't have that in North Carolina. County historian wrote two histories. One covers Carter County to 1860 and stops. And the second history picks up in 1865. He never wrote about the war years. All we are left with are a few articles culled from local newspapers and family histories. We complain that people, a lot of times we complain to young people, but it's people in general, we complain that people don't know their history. Maybe the problem lies with us not communicating that history. So I'm going to challenge you today, just like the veterans on the Historical Commission did to the rank and file of the United Confederate Veterans more than a century ago. We need a renaissance in history throughout the South. We need people to, quote, stimulate historical research, create historical taste, produce not only one work, but many works, employ not only one mind, but many minds. We don't necessarily need to be concerned with history taught in schools. But we need to concern ourselves with state histories, magazine articles, historical essays, popular sketches, local history. Here is a minefield rich of unexplored history. We need workers in the field. I'll go a step further into a world that my Confederate ancestors from Alabama and Kentucky could not have imagined. We need not only books, and articles, but we need blogs, we need YouTube channels, we need people on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. If people here in 2020 are going to get their history from a digital streaming source, we need to be the people putting that history out there. So it's our story that gets told. We also need to explore lesser known topics. There are more than enough books on the Battle of Gettysburg. I won't even mention how many books are on Lincoln. It's appalling. And while I have scores of books on Robert E. Lee, Douglas Southall Freeman's Pulitzer Prize winning four volume set published in the 1930s is where I usually turn first. We've got good biographies on Jefferson Davis and Stonewall Jackson and Patrick Claiborne. Let's turn our attention to those lesser known military and political figures. Do either of Tennessee's Confederate senators have biographies? I know one of them does not. He lies in an unmarked grave a couple of hours west of here. Y'all in Tennessee need to fix that.
let's think locally and act locally. Size up the war years in your communities. Research that history. Write about it. Blog about it. Make videos. At the same time, be honest with about what you find. Some of y'all's ancestors, like mine, were not saints. <laughs> I think there's a couple horse thieves back there in my family, and I know parts of my family made liquor. Same ones that preached on Sunday mornings at the local Baptist church. <laughs> Look for any way possible to communicate that history so that future generations will have access to it. Maybe it's time for us, sons and daughters, the descendants of the United Confederate Veterans, to explore the idea of a new historical committee. Not so much to recommend school histories, because that's kind of a lost cause right now, but to empower our membership to firmly entrench good Southern history into the communities that we live in. If not you, then who's going to do it? The professor at the university? Do you want him writing your history? In the Broadway musical Hamilton, watched by thousands, probably millions, on stage or on a streaming device, toward the end of that, after the death of film Hamilton in a duel in 1801 and after the death of Alexander Hamilton in 1804, that was the duel with Aaron Burr, their mother and widow Eliza Hamilton realized that we have little say in who lives or who dies. But she asked the real question, and when you're gone, who remembers your name? Who keeps your flame? Who tells your story? That's our job. We need to be telling their story. There are no more old soldiers. The last of them passed away in the 1940s and 50s. They have gone to rest over the river in the shade of the tree. With the likes of Albert Sidney Johnson and Patrick Claiborne, with Stonewall Jackson and Powell Hill, with Robert E. Lee, and with Jefferson Davis. There are no more old soldier reunions. We no longer gather once a year at the local courthouse bringing truckloads of food, listening to the final roll call of the old veterans who have passed away in the years prior, all the while waiting for the business sessions to be over so we can sit around the feet of the men who once wore the gray, listening to their stories, listening to the stories of the Battle of Shiloh and Franklin, of Chancellorsville and Gettysburg, of Appomattox and Greensboro. Stories of the hardships of camp mingled in with the laughs of camp scenes as these old men recall the days when they were just boys. We can no longer recite the United Confederate Veterans burial ritual. We are not their comrades. We didn't hear the roar of the cannon or the din of the conflict. We didn't stand elbow to elbow with them in the muddy trenches around Atlanta or Petersburg. We are only descendants. But yet that responsibility that they passed up, down upon us, that Stephen D. Lee gave to us when he gave that charge to the sons of the Confederate veterans and the daughters, if you read it closely, that is a great burden to bear. We are the ones charged to defend the Confederate soldier's good name, to guard his history, to perpetuate those principles which he loved. Perpetuate. To preserve something of value, to keep it from oblivion or extinction. Perpetuate. Maybe we need to make sure that our fellow camp members understands what that word means. The veterans knew that they had not been, that it would not be easy. They had struggled with the same problems and challenges in their lifetime, in the decades that they still had to live after the fighting in the hornet's nest or the sunken road, enduring the cold, the heat, the poor food. And while there have been many books written over the decades, published by the veterans themselves or later historians, the victors are still getting the information and writing 
books that we don't agree with. We could agree with General Lane, the one of knowledge among the rising generation, our southern youth, grown up since the war, of their trusted and faithful sons of the South, who so grandly fulfilled their pledges with their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor in her defense is absolutely appalling. Don't believe me? Ask your grandkids what they know about history. Young folks are not taught about our great nation. They are not taught about George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. They are not taught about the greatest southern statesman of all time, John C. Calhoun. They are not taught about how the Constitution places limits on what the federal government can do. E. Kirby Smith, before he died in 1893, expressed the opinion that the best way to get these materials, the things that we need to further tell of Southern history, of Confederate history, outside of what is available in what we today call the official records, quote, would be to have the camps of the Confederate veterans throughout the entire South take the trouble to collect all the material in the way of documents, personal recollections, etc., within their reach. Maybe that needs to be our mandate. Impartial history will vindicate thy motives and right thy deeds, stated the official burial ritual of the United Confederate Veterans. Remember, it is your duty to see that the true history of the South is presented to future generations. Somewhat added to Stephen D. Lee's charge to the sons of Confederate veterans. Perpetuate, to preserve something of value, to keep it from oblivion or extinction. As we have gathered here today to remember, to honor those that have gone on before us, those boys in gray, those soldiers, let me challenge you to heed General Smith's call. Collect everything within your grasp. Let me implore you to write of the illustrious deeds of our Confederate ancestors. Or if you can't write, help those of us who do. And let me plead with you to see that the true history of the South is presented to future generations. If we don't heed these calls, if we don't tell their story, then we have confined the Confederate soldier to the very thing that he feared the greatest, oblivion and extinction. Commander, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Michael Hardy. Give it up one more time for Mr. Still great to be alive and well in Dixie! We have our Confederate memorial service is going to start at 11. Everybody's looking at their watch. Let's synchronize our watches. You have 25 minutes. Relax. Take it easy. Go inside the museum. Get you a drink of water. <laughs> 